offshore oil mining, eliminated or sustained? Pollution, one of the, one of the most devastating challenges that our, our world faces. It will determine if we have a better future or not. And as we can see, the plastic, one of the biggest contributors to plastic waste has been, has been rising. This graph provided by the BBC shows that a whopping 6.3 billion metric tons of plastic waste was generated in 2015. And although, nine, although some of it's recycled, that only counts as a 9%, opposed to the 79%, which ends up in landfills and oceans. And Laura Parker from National Geographic, who specializes in climate change, says that in 2018, we generated 8.3 billion metric tons. It also takes over 400 years for the plastic to, to degrade, so most of it still remains in our, in our environment, even if it was generated a while back. Now this can cause pollution of many types, from ocean acidification or to, to the effects on the animals that it has. A quote from Margaret Thatcher, we are constantly learning more about these changes affecting our environment and scientists from the Polar Institute in Cambridge and the British Antarctic Sur Survey have been at the leading edge of research in both the Arctic and Ar Antarctic, warning us of the great, greater dangers that lie ahead. This quote is, is trying to inspire us to take responsibility of the things we do which cause pollution, which leads me into the research question. So going back on the plastic, not all of it's bad, not all of it ends up in, in landfills and in the ocean. Some of it is put to, to good use, such as building machines, household items, or anything you can think of which uses plastic. So this leads to the, my research question. What are some of the most impacting processes that are beneficial to humans, which also cause massive pollution, and what should, what should we do about them? One of, one of these, one of the biggest, is offshore oil drilling. Now this, this little informational picture provided by Quest Offshore Drilling Agency shows the difference between that and on onshore drilling, and we can see that it produces 30% of the world production of oil, which is a pretty massive amount. And if this were to be taken away, there would be some pretty negative consequences. Um, the difference between the two is that offshore, like it sounds, happens in ocean waters, and it ranges from around 400 to 1500 meters down below. And the only thing different about it is that. It has to be more stabilized since it does not have a good surface to work with. And we can see from this graph provided by BP Oil Company that oil usage in the US has been steadily increasing. So this means that we need to produce more in order to meet these needs. <coughs> now the problem here is that there are many considerations of banning offshore oil mining, but we would not be ready to deal with the impacts of this due to our lack of clean technology it is just not widespread enough for us to make that switch yet. Now, first thing we have to look at is, is political acceptance. According to the USA Today article, they say the Trump administration has consistently argued for expanded offshore drilling as a pillar of an economic strategy to make U.S. energy secure. On the other side of the political spectrum, Democrat Martin O'Malley writes in a letter, Opening the Atlantic, the Pacific, and off limits areas in the Gulf of Mexico could create nearly 840,000 American jobs and grow the economy by $70.2 billion dollars between 2017 and 2035. So from this, from this we can see that on both sides, both radical <coughs> sides of the political spectrum, it, it is accepted. Additionally, oil is just not used as well. Oil. The Energy Institute of America says that most of the crude oil produced in the U.S. is refined of petroleum products such as gas and diesel fuel, jet fuel, and heating oil. So these are commonly used by the everyday person, whether whether they are heating their house or driving. However, there, like I previously mentioned, there's not enough clean technology to make the switch. It would just leave many people without without oil to do their everyday things. However, there, there are some risks, risks to offshore oil mining, such as oil spills, which can be very damaging. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, in, a, in the Deepwater Horizon accident in the Gulf of Mexico, 11 workers died and 4 million barrels flowed over in the 87-day period before it was finally capped. 
However, the company was penalized for over $5.5 million, which was the largest penalty ever, which does make up for that. And this will also prevent them from being as dangerous with, with their rigs. However, even if these oil spills do occur, which is rare, they can, be, they can still be cleaned. As, lo as long as it is, the oil is still on the surface and is not too long after the spill, skimming can be a pretty effective use. However, if it is longer after the spill, there are still effective, effective uh, measures such as burning it or using chemicals. The solution to this. Sheen Lofney, he has a PhD in offshore engineering and he, he, he proposes in one of his articles that automated gas leak protections and remote monitoring systems would make oil, oil rigs a great deal safer. This, he says this because there's just a much less risk of human error getting in the way. And additionally, it makes accessing each specific component of rigs to make sure they're safe a lot easier. In fact, it's been implemented in a few North Sea rigs, which they have not reported any spills since. Well, they haven't had any before, but they haven't had any after either. The implications of this is that it is easy to install an existing rig, so you don't have to do a lot of infrastructure addition to it. It also reduces the risk of hazards involving gas and oil tremendously. And like I previously said, it is already, been, it is already in use on a North Sea rig. And additionally, you are, you are easily able to build upon it. So say you want to add some more safety measures, you can easily do that. The only downside is that it's pretty expensive and not that very many companies would be interested in doing it because of that. In conclusion, oil, uh, this making, getting rid of offshore oil mining would drastically reduce the amount of oil that we're able to use and we still don't have that technology to, to make up for that loss of oil. Um, and there are, there are thoughts of, of oil mining being expanded into the outer continental shelf because it's currently 98% of that is off limits. I think this, this should be expanded as long as oil rigs remain safe to keep producing more oil. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. I've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, first, what information did you need before you began your research, and how did you, that, that information shape the research you did? All right, so I really needed to find like processes that humans do, such I'm, such like I mentioned, as plastic, that really help help us like advance as humankind, but at the same time pose a dangerous threat to to um, the ecosystem. So, like those two, I thought that oil mining was the bigger one, so that really shaped my presentation from there. Okay. And then what additional questions emerged from your research? Um, from my research, I was wondering if there, if there are like any other ways apart from the automated things that I mentioned. There, I didn't see a lot of other solutions to keeping it. And that was pretty much the only thing I found. I was wondering if there was any other way to make it like, not safer, but not essentially safer, but more like acceptable to people. Cause there's still, although it's largely support, there are so many people who who are non-supportive, and I was wondering how would we how would we be able to make it accepted?